a welcome back. Uh, we're here live on the uh, new channel. So uh, I'm going to let people get a chance to come on in. Give you a few minutes. <clears throat> Again, the uh, new channel is um, the American Indian Prep and Survival TV channel. So if this is your uh, first time joining the uh, channel, I welcome you in. Uh, again, on this particular channel, we're going to talk about things that you can uh, do now. Um, things you can currently uh, practice and use in everyday uh, situations. So, um, peace, Rodham S. Prince. Appreciate you being here, brother. Uh, I'm going to give it a little bit more time um, to let some people get in here. Not sure if the uh, notification got out to everybody. So, we are going to uh, give it a few minutes. Hey, Chickahominy Roots. Peace. Good to see you. Let me um, make you a moderator, and that is done. Uh, Pamela, eyes wide and clear, peace, sis. Let me get you in here as well. I haven't had a chance to uh, do any um, moderation or anything for anybody yet, so <clears throat> excuse me. As people come in, I'll, um, I'll go ahead and uh, get the wrenches uh, added on. But uh, again, y'all, um, thank you for joining me. Um, like I was saying before, um, you know, this uh, channel, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Uh, this channel I wanted to uh, put together just so that we can um, talk about topics and explore things that we normally don't get into. Um, you know, we we talk a lot about wanting to do and get into, uh, you know, real life situations or things that we can uh, practice or use um, today, now. So today um, we are going to go over um, a book that I just got. It's called The Complete Guide to Edible Wild Plants. And it says it was originally made for the Department of the Army. Um, we all know that, um, you know, they got this information from our people. So, um, you know, definitely um, the, that's probably the source. So um, give me just a second here, y'all. I want to show you the uh, book in case anybody is interested in picking it up. I try to put it on the front of the camera here if I can. So hopefully everybody can see that okay. Again, that's the uh, guide to uh, edible wild plants. So, <clears throat> excuse me, what I'm going to do is uh, read a little bit um, in the uh, definition of you know, certain things with this. And then as we go through the different um, plants and things like that, I will uh, try to show on the screen what they are. Um, Wanagi and Petewase, bro, good to see you. Um, Michael Brown, hair is cheap. Alito, brother, good to see you. Um, so as we go along here, um, like I was saying before, we will... Uh, I'll try to show the pictures, um, and all I'm going to do is just Google what the plant actually is, so that way you guys can uh, see it. All right, so <clears throat> let's start. So it says in this book, um, again, like I said, I'll be reading a little bit here. In a survival situation, you will have to use what is available, so we all know that. Then it says... Uh, in using plants and other natural remedies, positive identification of the plants involved is as critical as in using them for food. Proper use of these plants is equally important. Okay. So, <clears throat> a lot of us, um, you know, know just from our families, you know, passing things down what um, home remedies work for us. You know, instead of just getting um, 
you know, medicine from the pharmacies and different places like that, that we know um, eventually end up killing us. So um, anytime you can go the natural way with herbs and uh, different plants um, out here in the world, the better. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about some terms and definitions. So it says the following term and their definition are associated with medicinal plant use. So we have the word uh, poultice, and that's P-O-U-L-T-I-C-E. This is the name given to crushed leaves or other plant parts, possibly heated, that you apply to a wound or some either directly or wrapped in cloth or paper. So we've seen, you know, movies or different things or whatnot where, you know, someone's out and maybe it's a movie about, you know, ancient times and, you know, the, them using plants to, you know, cover up a wound or, you know, whatever. But y'all know what I'm talking about. Now, the next thing we, uh, the next definition they talk about is the infusion or to sane or tea. And basically what that is, that's the preparation of medicinal herbs for internal or external application. You place a small quantity of a herb in a container, pour hot water over it, and let it steep. So that's how you can, uh, that's basically you using the um, herbs or whatever you're going to use for tea. So you, can, you just steep it and uh, you can uh, ingest it. Okay. The next thing is decoction, and that's D E C O C. T I O N, and that is the, ex the extract of a boiled down or simmered herbal leaf or root. You add, you add herb leaf or roar to water. You bring them to a sustained boil or simmer to draw their chemicals into the water. The average ratio is about 28 to 56 grams, one to two ounces of herbs to 0.5 liters of water. Okay, so I know uh, just talking with a few people that they actually um, do this with, you know, certain uh, plants that they use for teas. Again, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, hang on, y'all. Give me just one second real quick. Sorry about that. Need to get a drink real quick. All right. So, <clears throat> again, a lot of people um, that I know will take plants and they will, you know, uh, heat them up and, you know, get the chemicals and nutrients out of it and, you know, ingest it. So we actually do that with a lot of things now. And it says the la or the other definition that came up is express juice. So that's liquids or saps squeezed from plant material and either applied to the wound or made into another medicine. So I'm pretty sure that's how they, um, that's how they do medicine now. Um, they may have a little better way of going about it, but that's basically what they're doing with, with the uh, medication now. Okay. So <clears throat> moving on. It talks about specific remedies. So um, one of the, rem one of the uh, remedies, um, it says the following remedies are for use only in a survival situation, not for routine use. Okay. So the first thing they're talking about is diarrhea. So if you have diarrhea really bad, um, it says drink tea made from the root of blackberries and their uh, relatives to stop diarrhea. It says white oak bark and other barks containing tannin are also effective. However, use them with caution when nothing else is available because of possible negative effects on the kidneys. You can also stop diarrhea by eating white clay or campfire ashes. Tea made from cowberry or cranberry or hazel leaves works too okay so 
<clears throat> anybody that's listening in, um, if you could put in the chat, um, if you've ever tried using, you know, any of those remedies, just let me know. Um, one second, y'all. I think somebody is joining in. Let's see who we got. Oh, Love Legacy. Get him in here. Legacy, you in? Yeah. All right. What's up? What's good, brother? Ain't nothing, man. I just saw it, so I just jumped in. Okay, I appreciate it. Appreciate it, because I know you, you're into this as well. So glad to have you here. So what I was doing is, uh, did you catch me uh, while I was talking about these specific remedies? That part of it? No, I didn't catch anything. Oh, okay. Okay. So you're just coming in for the first time. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going over with uh, talking about to everybody is plants for uh, medicinal purposes or uses for medicine. Mm -hmm. So we went over some uh, terms and definitions about, you know, like how you can... um, you can uh, use some of this stuff as a tea or you can use it to uh, make it into a liquid or a sap so that you can put on a wound. Mm-hmm. So that's that's where we're at so far. Now, I was going over some specific remedies. We just covered diarrhea. So um, next, I'm going to get into anthemor haggits. Okay. Is my background hurting you? Because I'm outside moving around. No, you good. You good. You're good. So um, it says to make medication to stop bleeding from a from a uh, poultice of the puffball mushroom from plantation leaves or most effectively from leaves of the common yarrow or wound wart. So um, the next thing they go into is antiseptics. And then it says... Um, used to cleanse wounds, sores, or rashes. It says you can make them from the express juice from wild onion or garlic Uh or express juice from chickweed leaves or the Uh crushed leaves of dock. It says you can also make antiseptics from a decoction of burdock root, mallow Uh leaves or roots, Uh or white oak bark. I was going to say that. That's what I was going to say, white oak. Yep, yep, that's in there, absolutely. And, and that's what our people did because of the, the I believe, the wax, some more, I believe. Mm-hmm. I believe they were um in White Oak, oh, uh, gotcha. South Carolina. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely um, some saps you could use as um to clean wounds. Oh, yeah, that's definitely good information. Then it says, um, all these medications are for external use only. Okay. Mm-hmm. So next we're going to get into like fevers, colds, aches, and pains. So it says for fevers, it says treat a fever with a tea made from willow bark, an infusion of elderflowers or fruit. Then it says linden flower tea or elm bark uh, decoction. Okay, so that's for fevers. Mm-hmm. Um, next, it talks about colds and sore throats. Mm-hmm. So it says, treat these illnesses with a decoctation made from either plantation leaves or willow bark. Mm-hmm. You can also use a tea made from burdock roots, mallow or, or mullein flowers or roots, or mint leaves. So that also is good for uh, colds and sore throats. Mm-hmm. Okay, so next we're going to get into aches and pains and sprains. So it says treat with um, externally applied uh, poultice of dock, plantain, chickweed, willow bark, garlic, or sorrel. You can also use uh, salves made by mixing the express juice of these plants and animal fat or vegetable oils. So like I was telling everybody in the beginning, um, they tried to say this was uh, from the, that this was for the uh, U.S. Army. But I was telling everybody this more than likely came from um, our indigenous people 
uh, you know, the things they were using to heal themselves. Yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff has jumped out of our memory, mm-hmm. but um, but we'll still, you know, we still use certain stuff and just, you know, don't 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 know why. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> we just know it works. We know it works yeah. for certain stuff, but you know, we don't have the history like that. Right. Exactly. So the next one they talk about is for itching. Um, so it says to relieve the itch from insect bites, sunburn or plant poisoning rashes by applying a poultice of jewel weed or which um, or which hazel leaves. So I know a lot of people use the liquid form of witch hazel. Mm-hmm. Um, it says the jewel weed juice will help when applied to poison ivy rashes or insect stings. It works on sunburns as well. Uh, also aloe vera. So we all know about aloe vera. Um, I have a big aloe vera plant sitting out back right now. So, yeah. you know, any kind of burns or sunburn or anything like that, you know, we can use it. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't, I mean, yeah, I would use it for stuff like scars and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But anything other than that, nah, cause that stuff itch, man. Yeah. You get some real aloe, yeah, oh, it'll man. itch. You know, you know, it, you know it, it helps you, but it itches, though. Man, I'm, I'm out at the supermarket right now. I oh, know, you're good, bro. Yeah. <clears throat> no, 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 no. I'm just, you know, sharing my sadness. That I got to be at the supermarket. <laughs> Oh, gotta yeah. pay for our own stuff. <laughs> I know, right? That's all right. It's gonna change though. We're gonna do something oh, yeah. about it. You know that. So the next thing we're gonna get into is sedatives. So it says get help in falling asleep by brewing a tea made from mint leaves or passion flower leaves. All right. Next one is for hemorrhoids. So if anyone has hemorrhoids, it says oh, treat yeah. them. <laughs> Treat them with external washes from elm bark or oak bark tea from the express juice of plant of plantain leaves or from uh, Solomon's seal root uh, decoctation. Concoction. Okay, and let me get another one here. So worms or um, intestinal parasites. Mm. It says, using using moderation, treat with tea made from tansy or from wild carrot leaves. So that's something I didn't even know. Yeah, wild wild carrot leaves. Where are you going to find those at? I know, right? I never saw a a carrot with a leaf. (laughs) Well, if you get them where they they haven't cut off the, the, the ends on them, you can find them, but it's it's really hard, like you said. Probably, I've seen them, to, but it's hard to, to get. Probably go right to Etsy, get busy. Yeah, exactly. So, also, I wanted to talk about gas and cramps, because um, mm-hmm. we all get that. It says, mm-hmm. use a tea made from carrot seeds as an um, anti, anti-flatulent. Use tea made from mint leaves to settle the stomach. So it sounds like mint leaves actually has a lot of good uses here because I've seen that quite a few times. We use so, it. We don't know why, but we know it helps. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's just like if you go to a restaurant and eat and you, you know, grab those mints at the end, they're supposed to settle your stomach. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So. Let's go ahead and I want to get into the actual plants and their uh, uses. Um, again, I appreciate everybody in the chat for stopping through. Uh, Sheba Lolo, peace. Good to see you. Peace, peace. And let's see. I think Kiowa might be in here, but I'm not sure. Uh, I'm having that be my way. But peace to everybody that's listening in. Appreciate y'all. So next, I'm going to do a little screen sharing here. So let me get that going. All right. So the first plant that they talk about is the plant called a ball, A-B-A-L. So if you guys see on the screen, it, you we, I know we've all seen this. It's, you know, usually in des- a deserty kind of area, and it looks like it's just shrubbery. 
But let's read about it. It says the description of the abal is one of few shrubbery plants that exist in the shady deserts. This plant grows to about 1.2 meters and its branches look like wisp from a broom. The stiff green branches produce an abundance of flowers in the early spring months. And then that's during March and April. Okay. Now it's habitat and distribution. This plant is found in desert scrub and waste in any climate zone. It inhabits much of North, North, uh, North African desert. It may also be found on the desert sands in the Middle East and as far eastward as the desert in uh, Western India. So it says the edible parts of this plant, this says this plant's general appearance um, would not indicate its usefulness to the survivor. But while this plant is flowering in the spring, its fresh flowers can be eaten. This plant is common in the area where it is found. An analysis of the food value of this plant has shown to be high in sugar and um, nitrogenous components. Okay, so that's the abal plant. All right, so let's move on to the next plant. All right. You guys, give me a second. I'm going to plug this in. So it's AC. So it's AC. AC, AC, IA. Okay. So I believe that's spelled Acacia. So the acacia plant. Acacia. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, that's a acacia. sacred that's a sacred plant. Gotcha. Yeah. So the acacia is a spreading, usually short tree with spines and alternate compound leaves. Its individual leaflets are small. Its flowers are ball-shaped, bright yellow, and very fragrant. Its bark is a whitish gray color. Its fruits are dark brown and pod-like. Now it says it grows in open sunny areas. It is found throughout all tropical regions. And then it says uh, there are about 500 species. These plants are especially plentiful, Africa, Southern Asia, Australia, but many species are found in the warmer and drier parts of America. Now, the edible parts of it, it says that its young leaves, flowers, and pods are edible, raw, or cooked. So, again, if you guys see this plant, you know, you're in a survival situation. Um, you know that, you know, you are able to uh, eat the, uh, the uh, flower pods and different things that come off of it. You'll be okay. All right, so our next plant that we're going to get into. Um, one, one second, the acacia. Um, also, you see the acacia um, in uh, Freemasonry. And, of course, mm -hmm. if it's in Freemasonry, then it's in the Bible. So that's part of our story. Wow, good info. Appreciate it. So you might want to check on, check on that. Okay, absolutely. It was good. Uh, indigenous, original, copper, Indian. Peace to you. Good to see you. All right, so let's get back into it. So our next plant is going to be agave. Let's pull that up. That's sweet, right? Yep. So there's the agave plant, the different uh, variations of it there on the screen. So the description, it says, these plants have large clusters of thick, fleshy leaves born close to the ground and surrounding a central stalk. The plants flower only once, oh, excuse me, the plants flower only once, then die. They produce a massive flower stalk. Now the habitat and distribution, agaves prefer dry open areas. They are found throughout Central America, the Caribbean, and parts of Western deserts in the United States and Mexico. In the edible parts, it says it's flowers and flower buds are edible boil them before eating hmm. now it does have a like caution type thing 
It says the juice of some species cause uh, dermatitis in some individuals. So you got to be careful of, uh, you know, just, just going in on it. Other uses, it says cut the huge flower stalk and collect the juice for drinking. Some species may have fibrous leaves. Pound the leaves and remove and remove the fibers for weaving and making rope. So there we go. There's another use for it. You can make rope or, you know, whatever from it. Most species have thick, sharp needles at the tip of the leaves. Use them for sewing or making hacks. The sap of some species contains a chemical that makes the sap suitable for use as a soup. All right. So that's the agave plant. So hopefully um, we got some good information out of that. Oh, yeah, absolutely, Rodham as Prince. It is great as a sugar substitute, I agree. Mm -hmm. All right, so next plant we're going to get into is going to be um, the almond. Let's pull that up. And I'm sure we've all had almonds at some point in time, unless you're allergic. Mm -hmm. Yep, I hate them. Can't stand the <laughs> almonds. All right, there it is on the screen. All right, guys. So let's read the description of the almond. The almond tree, which sometimes grows to 12.2 meters, looks like a peach tree. The fresh almond fruit resemble a gnarled, unripe peach and grows in clusters. The stone, the almond itself, is covered with a thick, dry, woolly skin. So that's how it'll look as you guys see on the screen if you see it out there so again there's several different uh variations of it here but that's what you'll normally see when you see an almond in the wild okay or if you're growing them it says habitat and distribution Al almonds are found in the scrub and thorn forest of the tropics the evergreen scrub forest of temperate areas and in desert scrub and waste in all climate zones. The almond tree is also found in the semi-desert areas of the old world and Southern Europe, the Eastern Mediterranean, Iran, the Middle East, China, Madaria, the Azores, and the Canary Islands. Okay, mm -hmm. so the edible parts. It says the mature almond fruit splits open lengthwise down the side, exposing the ripe almond nut. You can easily get the dry kernel by simply cracking open, open the stone. Almond meats are rich in food value, like all nuts. Gather them in large quantities and shell them for further use as a survival food. You could live solely on almonds for rather long periods. When you boil them, the kernel's, the kernel's outer covering comes off and only the white meat remains. All right, so that's the almond. But, you know, just like most uh, nuts um, type, type uh, plants, um, like they were saying, you can, you know, sustain yourself for quite a while on these. So even if you don't like them, you know, again, these are survival um, type things. Oh, yeah. Survival. I'm eating all of that. Walnuts. Oh, yeah. I eat a exactly. pecan. Boy, I can't stand a pecan. <laughs> but I listen. You gotta do what you gotta do, but um, almond oil is good for your hair. Oh, I don't know what else might be skin I also. Yeah. yeah, I had no idea. Appreciate that. Liz Robinson, peace. Good to see you, sis. Um, all right, so our next plant that we're gonna be looking at is amaranth. Um, almond ranth. I hope I'm saying that right. Amarenta or something like that. Yeah, it's got the T H at the at the end of it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, some of somebody ancestor has that name. Really? I said, yeah, they ain't from Africa. No. Means <laughs> <laughs> you have to. <laughs> that's crazy. Heck yeah. All right, there we go. Okay. So let's read about it. 
So again, uh, you're going to see different varieties uh, here on the screen. So, well, let's get into it real quick. It says these plants, um, which grow 90 centimeters to 150 centimeters tall, are abundant weeds in many parts of the world. All Armenrath have alternate simple leaves. They may um, have some red color present on, on the stem. They bear minute greenish fruit and dense clusters at the top of the plants. The, uh, their seeds can be brown or black and weedy species and light colored and domestic species. Now their habitat and distribution. Look for armorath along roadsides and distributed waste areas or as weeds and crops throughout the world. Some armorath species have been grown as a grain crop and a garden vegetable in various parts of the world, especially in South America. Now the edible parts. All parts are edible, but some may have sharp spines. You should remove before eating. The young plants or the growing tips of older plants are excellent vegetable. Simply boil the young plant or eat them raw. Their seeds are very nutritious. Shake the top of the older plants to get to get the uh, seeds. Eat the seeds raw, boiled, ground in the flour, or pop like popcorn. All right, so that's almond wrap. Jimmy, so again, you know, we're learning about a lot of different things that, you know, that you can eat in survival situations. Okay. So the next plant we're gonna get into is gonna be the Arctic willow. So let me pull that up. The Arctic willow. And again, um, anybody that's interested, the, uh, the name of the book again is The Complete Guide to Edible Wild Plants, Department of the Army. Okay, so yeah, you look anything anything written by a uh, Marine and Army. Oh, um, yeah. They'll find stuff. Oh yeah, I showed some books. I'm gonna do a video uh, soon, uh, and I'm gonna go through all my books again. Nice. So, no, just in case people missed them, and I got new ones. So. Okay, that sounds good. So the um, Arctic willow, the description: the Arctic willow is a shrub that never exceeds more than 60 centimeters in height, and grows in clumps that form dense mats on the uh, tundra. So this sounds like something that may be in a colder climate, but, uh, you know, you never know where you're going to be. Mm -hmm. um, it says habitat and distribution. The Arctic willow is common on tundras in North America, Europe, and Asia. You can also find it in some mountainous area in uh, temperate regions. So the edible parts. You can collect the succulent tender young shoots of the Arctic willow in early spring. Strip off the outer bark of the new shoots and eat the inner portion raw. You can also peel and eat, and eat raw the young underground shoots of any of the various kinds of Arctic willow. Young willow leaves are one of the richest sources of vitamin C, containing seven to 10 times more than on average, or excuse me, seven to 10 times more than an orange. So you can actually get more vitamin C out of this plant than you can an actual orange, which is uh, great information to know. But uh, relatives, that is the Arctic willow. Okay. Stephen Red Clay, what's good, brother? And Petro Waste to you. Good to see you. Um, again, guys, if you haven't uh, had the chance, uh, Mr. Uh, Stephen Red Clay has a store on Etsy. Please hit him up. It's Niji Roots. And uh, he's got some great items on there for sale. All right. Our next uh, plant that we're going to get into is arrowroot. So I know everyone's heard of that one. So let's pull it up. A lot of times it's using a powder and different things like that. So 
So that is the different variations of arrowroot that you see on the screen. So let's talk about it. Um, the arrowroot is an aquatic plant with arrow-shaped leaves and potato-like tubers in the mud. Habitat and distribution. Arrowroot is found worldwide in temperate zones and topics. It is found in moist to wet habitats. The edible parts. The root stock is a rich source of high quality starch. Boil the root stock and eat it as a vegetable. So pretty simple. So if you find an arrowroot, again, um, this is what it looks like. And, you know, you can just boil it and eat it. You know, chop it up, eat it. Again, you know, these are um, survival situations. So just remember that. Okay, so our next thing we're going to talk about is asparagus. So let me pull that up. And I know we've all had it. I like to grill asparagus, actually. I don't know. Is asparagus good for you, um, Legacy? Not for me. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it has some type of benefit. I mean, nothing is here without without a purpose. Yeah. So true. whether it's to give to give life or to kill, it's here. Yeah. I mess with it. I like it. So asparagus ain't. I, I haven't heard of any asparagus death. Right. <laughs> All right. So asparagus. Um, so that's how we normally see it. Um, let me let me see if I can put it in as the actual plant, because that would be a better better way of seeing it in the wild. There we go. Okay, guys. So that's the that's how asparagus looks as a plant before it's taken out of the ground. So, um, the spring growth of this plant resembles a cluster of green fingers. The mature plant is fern-like, wispy, ris excuse me, wispy foliage and red berries. Its flowers are small and greenish in color. Several species have sharp thorn-like structures. Now their habitat. Um, asparagus is found worldwide in temperature, or excuse me, temperate areas. Look for it in fields, old home sites and fence, in, uh, fence, fence rows edible parts. It says, eat the young stem before leaves form, steam or boil them for 10 to 15 minutes before eating. Raw asparagus may cause nausea or diarrhea. The fleshy roots are a good source of starch. Now it says, they give a warning. It says, do not eat the fruits of any asparagus since some are toxic. So keep that in mind. So that's the asparagus plant. Let me see if uh got any questions or anything for yeah, um, in the chat. Just 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 because you can eat one part of a plant or fruit right. or whatever doesn't mean you can eat it all. Exactly. So you guys gotta be careful. Sometimes you might need a root a root for some for one thing, mm -hmm. but the plant you can't eat and the or the uh, fruit you can't eat, but the root of it you can and stuff like that. So you just gotta know your stuff. You yeah. gotta read those books. Exactly. Yep. And then, you know, again, that's why I wanted to go over this, because like you were saying in the beginning, a lot of us have forgotten, um, you know, what these plants look like, what they can do for us and all those different things. So we know some of the stuff, but there's a lot of things that we have forgotten. So, you know, that's oh, why thing. we get these survival books, you know, for a reason. Yeah. One thing um, one thing I want to say, uh, since I'm, I'm in a supermarket right now, mm -hmm. uh, that vegetable oil yeah people say oh it's healthier and all of that but it has a lot of soy it has so it's made from soy and it has a lot of estrogen in it so i Dude. just wanted to warn people while i was on my mind yeah good deal so I, i'm going back to the corn <laughs> oh yeah I, yeah I don't i don't fry like that anyway mm -hmm. but if i'm gonna if i do i'm gonna use corn oil yeah all right, so next we're going to talk about the bell fruit. So that is a picture of it on the screen there. That's what it looks like um, on the outside, and then when you cut it. 
So the bell fruit that says this, this is a tree that grows from 2.4 to 4.6 meters tall with a dense spiny growth. The fruit is five to 10 centimeters in diameter, gray or yellowish and full of seeds. Okay. Um, the bell fruit, so where you can find it, it's habitat and distribution. Bell fruit is found in rainforests and um, semi-evergreen seasonal forests of the tropics. It grows wild in India and Burma. So sounds like to me that it, you know, would be, you know, in your South America type areas, Central America um, places, Caribbean. It says the fruit, the, um, the edible parts, the fruit which ripens in December is at its best when just turning ripe. The juice of the ripe fruit diluted with water and mixed with a small amount of tamarind and sugar or honey, it says it's sour but refreshing. Like other citrus fruits, it is rich in vitamin C. So there you go. So you can actually use the juice from this fruit and, uh, you know, it has a lot of vitamin C in it. Okay. So let's move on to the next So our next uh, medicinal thing that we're going to talk about is going to be bamboo. And you now can find bamboo, you know, it is in grocery stores, but you know, again, this is bamboo out in the wild. So let's pull that up. All right, this is what it looks like, all the different variations. Yeah, you could mess somebody up with some bamboo. Oh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> so it says that bamboo, the description of it, bamboos are woody grasses that grow up to 15 meters tall. The leaves are grass-like, and the stem are familiar bamboo used in furniture and fishing poles. So we've all seen bamboo furniture, trees, fishing poles, all that stuff. All right, so the habitat and distribution. It says look for bamboo in warm, moist regions in the open or jungle country and lowlands or on mountains. Bamboos are native to the Far East, temperate and tropical zones, but they have been widely planted around the world. Okay. Um, the edible parts. <clears throat> Excuse me. The young shoots of almost all species are edible raw or cooked. Raw shoots have a slightly bitter taste. <clears throat> Excuse me. Slightly bitter taste that is removed by boiling to prepare. Remove the tough protective sheath that is coated with tawny or red hairs. The seed grain of the flowering bamboo is also edible. Boil the seeds like rice or pulverize them mixed with water and make into cakes. Okay. Other uses. Use the mature bamboo to build structures or to make containers, um, ladles, ladles, spoons, and various other cooking utensils. Also use bamboo to make tools and weapons. Um, you can make a strong bow by splitting the bamboo and putting several pieces together. So we, we've seen that where, I don't know if you guys seen some of those, um, videos on youtube where they have uh people out in the jungle just making uh you know structures pools all kinds of different things but they use bamboo and different things as the uh as a um the structure you know before they finish it up so it's the floor the the walls and all kinds of different things um it says caution green bamboo may explode in a fire Green bamboo has an internal membrane you must remove before using it as a food or water container. So just remember that it will explode if it's heated up, if you don't remove the membrane from it. Okay. So let me check on the chat real quick, see what's going on. All right. Yeah, thank you, Blue Tint. So uh, primitive technologies. Yeah, that's what I was trying to think of. Thank you. All right, guys. So let's keep it moving. 
Um, our next thing that we're going to be talking about is the banana and the plantain. So let's pull, let's pull those up. Again, hard to find um, banana plants nowadays. It's a lot of different ones, though. Yeah. You got to be careful what you eat, too, with those, I think. Oh, absolutely. Let's see if we can get any images here. There we go. All right, so I think we've all seen the banana plants, um, but that's what they look like. So the description of the banana and plantain, these are tree-like plants with several large leaves at the top. Their flowers are born in dense hanging clusters. Now their habitat and distribution, look for bananas and plantains in open fields or margins of forests where they are grown as a crop. They grow in the humid tropics, okay? The edible parts. Their fruits are edible raw or cooked. They may be boiled or baked. You can boil their flowers and eat them like a vegetable. You can cook and eat the um, rootstock and leaf sheaths of many species. It says the center or heart or the plant is edible year round, cooked or raw. Now other uses for the banana and plantain. You can use the layers of the lower third of the plants to cover coals to roast food. You can also use their stumps to get water. Um, you can use their leaves to wrap other foods for cooking or storage. So um, those big old leaves that they have, you know, you can use those leaves for many different purposes is what it's basically saying. So just keep that in mind. All right. Legacy, you ever heard of uh, Baobab? A uh, what? Baobab. No, nah, man. Baobab plant. Nah, that sounds like a demon or something, man. Well, let me pull it up. Hey, oh, bad. <laughs> I summon you. Right. So let's pull that one up. All right, baobab tree. Yeah, I was going to say, that looks like a tree that I've seen in Africa quite some, you know, on TV and different things all the time. Like, I always see this tree. Okay, so that's the tree. So let's see what kind of plant this tree actually has on it. So the baobab tree may grow as high as 18 meters and may have a trunk 9 meters in diameter. The tree has short, stubby branches and a gray, thick bark. Its leaves are compound and their segments are arranged like the palm of a hand. Its flowers, which are white and several centimeters across, hanging from the higher branches. Its fruit is shaped like a football, measures up to 45 centimeters long, and is covered in short, dense hair. Okay, so let's read about where the habitat is for this. The trees grow in savannas. They are found in Africa, in parts of Australia, and on the island of Madagascar. The edible parts. It says you can use young leaves as a soup vegetable. The tender root of the young baobab tree is edible. The pulp and seeds of the fruit are also edible. Use one handful of pulp to about one cup of water for a refreshing drink. To obtain flour, roast the seeds, then grind them. Okay, let me see if I can actually show the uh, the fruit that you can get off of it. Because this is just showing the tree. There we go. So that's what it looks like. So this is what's growing on this tree. All right. 
Now, other uses for this is says drinking a mixture of pulp and water will help cure diarrhea. Often, the hollow trunks are good sources of fresh water. The bark can be cut into strips and pounded into a strong fiber to make rope. All right. So that is the baobab tree. Okay, next we're going to look at the bataco plum. So let me pull that up. All right, there we go. All right, relative. So this is the Bataco plum. All right, so let's read about it. The description, this shrub or small tree has dark green, alternate, simple leaves. Its fruits are bright red and contain six or more seeds. Okay. Habitat and distribution. This plant is a native of the Philippines, but is widely cultivated for its fruit in other areas. It can be found in clearings and at the edges of the tropical rainforest of Africa and Asia. Edible parts, it says eat the fruit raw or cooked. Okay. So that is the Bataco plum. All right, let's see here. So next we got bearberry or kinnikinnik. So we'll call it bearberry. So let's see if we can actually find a picture of it. There we go. All right, guys. So I think we've probably all seen these, the bear berries. So let's read about it. So bear berries, it says the description says this plant is a common evergreen shrub with reddish scaly bark and thick leathery leaves, four centimeters long and one centimeter wide. It has white flowers and bright red fruit. Okay. I know we've seen these. I see these all the time out and about. Um, it says this plant is found in the Arctic, subarctic, and uh, temperate regions, most often in sandy or rocky soil. Then it says the edible parts. Its, ber its berries are edible or edible raw or cooked. And it says you can make a refreshing tea from its young leaves. Okay. So that is the bear berry plant. All right. So relatives, we'll probably rock out maybe a few more minutes. Um, hope everybody's enjoying the, enjoying the uh, stream so far. Everything is well. Um, and we'll probably continue this on in various parts. Probably not every live stream will be over this, but we'll, uh, we'll dig in every once in a while on this book. So... Um, let me flick through the book real quick just to see if there's anything that is uh, catching my eye here. Okay, so we'll go over one more. We'll do the uh, beach plant. One second here to pull that up. All right, there we go. Okay, so that's the beach plant. Um, it says, so the description, it says, beach trees are large, nine to, 20, nine to 24 centimeters or meters. Symmetrical forest trees that have smooth light gray bark and dark green foliage. It says the character of its bark plus its clusters of prickly seed pods clearly distinguish excuse me, clearly distinguish the beech tree in the field. Habitat and distribution. This tree is found in the temperate zone. It grows wild in the Eastern United States, Europe, Asia, and North Africa. It is found in moist areas, mainly in forests. These tree, this tree is common throughout Southeastern Europe and across uh, temperate Asia. 
beach relatives also found in Chile, New Guinea, and New Zealand. Okay, the edible parts. The mature uh, beech nuts readily fall out of the husk-like seed pods. You can eat these dark brown triangular nuts by breaking the thin shell with your fingernail and removing the white sweet kernel inside. Beech nuts are one of the most delicious of all wild nuts. They are a, a uh, most useful survival food because of the kernel's high oil content. You can also use the beech nuts as coffee substitute. Roast them so that the kernel becomes golden brown and quite hard, then pulverize the kernel. And after boiling or steeping in hot water, you have a passable coffee substitute. All right. So let me see if I can pull up a beech nut. And we'll take a look and see what it looks like. There it is. All right, so um, again, you can, you know, you can eat these. They can be crushed and made into coffee, all kinds of different things like that. All right. So let me stop the screen share and go back to the chat real quick and see what's going on. All right. So again, relatives, I uh, didn't want to make it a super long uh, live stream, just wanted to come in and uh, go over a few things in the book. Um, if anybody um, has any uh, questions or anything that you'd like to, um, you know, add to the channel, please uh, leave me a comment after the live stream is over with. Um, again, we should, uh, we're going to be, um, <laughs> yeah, Pamela, the baby food. <laughs> Again, we're gonna um, have uh, content on here from probably Wanagi, um, Kudameo, you know, anybody that wants to to uh, contribute to the channel, just uh, again, hit me up and uh, we'll get you on here. Um, any questions from anybody out in the chat or anything anyone wanted to add before we go? I think Legacy's still in the, still in the store, so he might be busy. Uh, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, I mean, just get on it. Whatever whatever you're getting on, you need to get on it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you if you can um if you could be the master of one or you can know a little bit about everything, uh just do it, man. You know? I yeah. mean we, we we have we have to talk, but you know, it's like the talking is over. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Start doing in a sense. In a sense, like gotta yeah. get together, man. So oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know, the books, the books are there. The, the information is there. It's stuff online. It's, it's information everywhere. So Absolutely. there's really no excuse for, for anything. You know, Absolutely. just like I, I, I do some genealogy, same way anybody else could do it. It's there. It's just, you know, you got to be the master of what you're the master of. And then link up with people who are the master of other things. And then that's how you make a community. That's correct. Um, Rodimus Prince had a question about is um, arrowroot related to the uh, yucca plant. So I'm going to look that up real quick. Unless you know. I don't know. Okay. Let's see what we get here. Um, I believe yucca, from what I'm reading here. So it just it gave me a. Uh, I thought yucca was like a potato. Well, it gave me a Wikipedia link, and um, it's in the uh, family of the asparagus. So I don't think it is. Um, you said the you said the yucca is in the family of asparagus. Yes, yeah, yeah. No yucca. Uh, is. Oh man. Yeah, so he was wondering if they were like, you know, related plants. 
Yeah, like like like, like we related to Africa. <laughs> right. People just, these people just make stuff up. You know what I'm saying? You show yeah. me you show you show me something that's a circle, and then show me something square, and then you gonna tell me they're related. Oh yeah, you know. Absolutely. But uh, no, Rodimaz, it, it Rodimaz friends. It doesn't look like it is, but um, you know, I may have to do a little bit more research on it. But just from quick search I did, it doesn't say that it is. So, but uh, no doubt, family. Um, we, uh, you know, again, we'll try to come back and uh, you and uh, get some other things on it. So, um, I wanted to start it out with you know some plants you know survival type things you know as far as growing different things like that but we will get into into a lot of other different things so um we'll get into you know maybe getting some like prepping some basic prepping list organized for you so you you know you can kind of go out and just not be out there not knowing what you're doing so we can you know, get you some kind of list of what, you know, what basic things you should start out with as far as prepping is concerned. And then eventually we will get into um, different types of weapons. Um, you know, not every, not every weapon it has to be used for, you know, defense. Um, as we know, a lot of the weapons, uh, you know, are used for other things like, you know, hunting, different things like that. So we will get into that. Um, we will also be at some point getting into firearms as well. Um, so, you know, anybody uh, who hasn't started to um, you know as far as firearms, I know, I know not everyone's into guns and different things like that, but um, you have the right to carry them. So, you know, since you do have that right, um, you know, I implore you, if you can, you know, defend yourself. You know, you ain't got to go out and do anything with it to anybody unless, you know, you're, you're being harmed or you're being threatened. So, again, um, you know, maybe we'll get into concealed carry, different things like that. But, you know, all that is part of survival and preparation. Um, like when Nagi was saying in the um, in the chat, you know, stock up now on supplies that you need. Um, again, we we saw what happened when everybody went all crazy, and we all know the coronavirus thing hasn't gone away. I don't care what they open back up. Um, we all know that hasn't went went anywhere. So something's going on, and again, we need to be prepared. So. Let's keep that in mind. Um, we may get to the point where, you know, you do have to start hunting your own food. Um, so, you know, we don't know where this is going, but I just want everybody who, you know, <clears throat> who listens to the live streams, um, you know, I want the best for everybody and I don't want to see anyone, you know, uh, out there not ready. So that's the whole point of this channel. Again, we've uh, kind of beat up on genealogy quite a bit, so um, may spend a little bit more time over here on this channel. Um, you know, again, genealogy is super important. Um, as Wanagi says, it's key. As I say, it's still the first thing. Um, you know, that's something that we're never, ever going to get away from, but, you know, we just don't want to keep beating up on it over and over and over and over, so... With that said, uh, relatives, um, I will catch everybody uh, next Monday and Tuesday, and uh, we'll probably be over here on this channel talking about some other things. Um, yeah, well, Nagi, absolutely right. The states will close again. So, um, again, uh, if, if, you know, coronavirus is what they say it is, then... You know, it, it hasn't gone anywhere. So, you know, them opening things back up just because they still want to make money doesn't mean that the uh, whatever was going on has gone away. So just keep that in mind, guys. All right. And uh, Legacy, you still there? Yeah. Okay. 
Did you did yeah. you have any last things or you good? Um, I don't know, man. I, I, um, this whole COVID nineteen thing, man, is a little a little uh sketchy, man. Yeah, that's, that's all I gotta say. I don't wanna be the conspiracy theorist, but you, you know all this. Come on, man. All of a sudden, we became black. What else could they make disappear? Right. You know, or or reappear, or or appear. So you know, I know I've been seeing a lot of the stuff in the sky. Oh man. And uh, <laughs> I'm wondering if I wonder if, if any of this was an attack. Oh, this this is what I this is what I'll say about, um, you know, I'm not sure what's up there in the sky or what's going on. But I know here every single day it's cloudy and it's raining and it's not warm. And, you know, um, I know Wanagi has been doing several videos on, you know, what he's seeing up in the sky every single night. So, you know, I know, you know, I was saying this way back when I first got on YouTube, you know, I was you know, I, I I know I know some alien invasion type thing is probably going to, going to try to pop off. So y'all just be prepared for that. That's probably going to be the next thing they're going to throw on us. But again, that's my uh, conspiracy theorist speaking. <laughs> so you know, again, I try to stay grounded and you know. Yeah. Well, I know I saw. Reality, I but. know I saw. I know I saw thirty thirty different. Uh, vessels in the sky mm -hmm. going in a straight line one night. Yeah. I looked, I said, and they were way up high. Like 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 they were so high up it looked like stars. Mm. But I know that they was like planes. So wow. all in a, a straight line, 30 of them. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Hey, yeah. They better get on it, man. Something, they better get on it. Stop playing. Out there, bro. I'm not playing, man. I'm trying to get up out of New York. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. hear you, bro. I'm going to be third rock from the sun. Right. <laughs> I feel you, man. So, I mean, um, again, probably right now is, you know, probably one of the best times uh, to, you know, look into, you know, if you are stuck in the cities, you know, look to maybe getting out in more country part areas. Um. You know, land, land right now, you know, I, I know everyone says we shouldn't have to pay for it. And I completely agree. But unfortunately, we're not going to get this land back for free. So my bet is, is that, you know, if you want land before your time is up on this on this planet, you're probably going to have to go out and purchase it. What do you, what do you think, uh, Legacy? Yeah, yeah, man. As I say, I gotta get together. People gotta get together, and um, you yeah. know, and, I mean, not not nothing that's not organic, but right. people that you already tie with, people that you already yeah. trust. I right. need to get together, put your money together, and go ahead, man, and sell off whatever y'all got, and get get a bunch of land. Yeah, shack I up, mean, shack up like we used to do. Get that pallet on the floor. <laughs> exactly. Get us a little one room shack or some. Mm -hmm. Sleeping bags on the floor or whatever. Oh, I thought you were about yeah. to freestyle, man. I thought you were about to uh, do that Biggie song. <laughs> One room shack with niece on the back. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. But yeah, man, we got to, you know, so I mean, land, you know, land right now. I know, you know, I, I've been looking here in Ohio and it's not really that expensive. We're talking about, you know, acres. So, you know, we don't need two or three hundred acres but you know five ten acres twenty you know they ain't going for that that ex, you know they're not that expensive right now and you know people buy houses that are you know hundred and thirty hundred fifty thousand dollars three hundred thousand you know what i'm new saying york, new york people buying for a million dollars house right a million dollars you know you could do a million dollars in the country bro Man, you have so many That's what I'm saying, man. That's what I'm saying. That's why it's important. Excuse me. That's why it's important yeah. because if you, you yeah. know, if you get an acre acreage, I mean, you can do whatever you want on that land. You got your water, you grow your food. I mean, what else do you need? I mean, let's let's be real. What else do you need? 
you know, I, again, with me, I, you know, I'm trying to get away from being dependent, being dependent on our government and all that as much as possible. And, you know, I know we've been taught and trained that, you know, money is, you know, is what's going to set us free. And trust me, you do need it because you got to pay your bills. But um, I feel like, you know, if we if we were out, you know, back the way we used to be, you know, on the land doing all them things, then we wouldn't need to depend on someone else to feed us and clothe us and all that other stuff. So we all got family members that, you know, do that, you know, have different skills, make clothes, you know, whatever. So again, um, if you can get into some land purchase, do it. Um, I saw Stephen Redclay was uh, talking about this yesterday um, in, in, in one of the chats, you know, he was saying, if you want land, you're going to have to go buy it. Um, I, I really honestly don't think there is, they're just going to give it back. So, you know, again, unless somebody's got something that they've done where they've gotten their land back for free, you know, I always say this, we need them videos, you know, we need the how to, you know, cause we all have some family that had land back in the day, but you know, getting it back, you know, what's the process. So yeah, anyway, uh, I'm done rambling on. Yeah, man. Sanitize everything you touch, man. Oh God. So like I say, I mean, we don't know what's going on, but I know a couple people said they, they, they got this COVID-19 thing. So yeah, man, take it serious, man. Whatever it is. I don't know. But I'd rather be safe than sorry. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we just if nothing else, this is making everybody be, you know, a little bit more sanitary than they used to be. Huh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where you at. Well. I mean, I'm not in New York, so it's some it's some know. wild Indians out here. <laughs> you know, some people just go to the restroom and don't wash their hands and man, listen. All kinds yeah. of nasty stuff. Yeah, I got my. Yeah, um, uh, don't worry about it. Man. Yeah, my bad. Right, they, asked me, they asked me for my shot break card, man. <laughs> Interrupting my video, man. I'm trying to sound professional here. Right. <laughs> but all right, bro, man. I love all of y'all. All right, Legacy. Appreciate you jumping on with me, brother. I appreciate it. For sure, for sure. Yeah, Red Clay, something is definitely going on. For sure, brother. You know it. Anyway, y'all, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, dip on up out of here. And, uh, again, I will see everyone uh, next Monday and Tuesday. Y'all take care now. Be safe out there. One love.